Welcome to today's Dr. Russ Air Rifle Adventures. <laughs> We're going to be talking about competition uh, shooting in a competitive event. Something I did with uh, powder guns. I've asked uh, Izzy to share with you and me. Uh, Izzy, who uh, is the right hand man of Donnie, uh, Donnie Dew at Donnie FL down in Florida. Izzy participates in some of the biggest air gun co competitive events out there. And uh, it's kind of hard to get people to share their secrets. He didn't share all of his secrets, but he shared enough of them. I uh, also shot competitively, but it was not with air guns. It was with powder guns uh, following uh, my Vietnam stint. And uh, I'll share a couple of those at the end too. But all of these are to help you be more accurate. You know, I have this um, a deal breaker list, uh, 75 features of different air guns. So before you buy an air gun, you want to go through, you want to highlight the deal breakers for you. I mean, if it doesn't have X, then let's not buy it. It was one of your deal breakers. And uh, your deal breakers can be different than mine. Uh, that list is very, very helpful to me and to a number of you who've uh, ordered hats and shirts and things from us. And uh, I'm glad to hear that, that you're using it. It's better than just buying what's hot at that moment. Um, why am I speaking about competition today? Why have I asked Izzy to share his secrets with us? And uh, it's not just that it's the number one thing on my deal breaker list but it's probably number one with you too, and certainly high on the list. For example, what if you were shooting today by yourself and you had a flyer? You just, it, it didn't hit the target. So you go home and you're disappointed. Was it me or was it the gun? And you'll think about it for days. In another instance, you might be with three or four of your friends and they whipped you pretty good that day, you were not the best shot. Though on another day you might have been. And so you drive home that day disappointed that you came in last. So when we look at competition, you may never be in an air, air rifle competition in your life, but you still want to be accurate. And so some of the things that we'll learn here today are going to help you. and. They've helped me. But before we share them, let's share some things <laughs> that some small children have said, much like they did with Art Linkletter many years ago. Some wisdom for you from small children. First, we have a young man named Amir. He's only nine years old, but he's got some good wisdom for us. He says, you cannot hide broccoli or any other vegetables in your milk glass. <laughs> he obviously tried it. It didn't work. Kelly, who's age 11, said, Don't wear polka dot underwear under a white dress. Sounds like good advice to me. And Naomi, another girl age 15, she says, If you want a kitten, if you want a kitten, start, a, start out by asking, for a pony. <laughs> so there's your humor for the day. Let me tell you why accuracy is my focal point. I'm sure, like you, I have shot some animals, some destructive critters, critters and uh, I didn't kill them. They were able to get away. And I think about them, I think they probably did not get away. They probably still were killed and or eaten by something in the food chain. Not too unlike you and I being attacked by a lion or a bear. Not a great way to go. Others perhaps crawled into the attic or into the walls and died. You don't want that to happen. When I was in Vietnam, every time I squeezed the trigger and shot an enemy soldier, that was one more soldier that wasn't going to be killing my soldiers or shooting at me. So accuracy is very, very important. 
as I get into this uh, list that Izzy from uh, Donnie FL shared with me, you'll have to understand why I'm standing here and not Izzy. Uh, in a week or two here, I'll be down in Florida, but that's when Izzy is going to be gone. And he's up at what they call, I think, the Northeast Air Gunner Classic. Oh, about 800 people competing up there. And he's preparing and getting ready for that, and that's why. He wouldn't be in Florida when I'm in Florida. So he shared these over the phone, but make no mistake, these tips come from Izzy. Now keep in mind, he's got some hunting guns, he's got some plinking guns, uh, because I'm going to share some stuff with you, and you're going to say, oh, I don't do that, oh, I don't have that oil, I don't this, I don't that. But keep in mind, this is for competitive shooting, and uh, Izzy has other things for just good old fun plinking. I understand that uh, Pyramid Air is going to start, uh, restart some competitive shooting they have in Ohio. But the biggest event of all is the uh, Rocky Mountain Air Gun Classic RMAC. It's uh, really sponsored by a lot of companies, but primarily uh, Utah Air. And uh, it's a real dry climate, but boy, they've got that outdoor uh, terrain that allows some short shots and some very, very long shots. What's the reward for competitive shooting? Well, I think I think they uh, split thirty thousand dollars up at Rocky Mountain. They they divide thirty thousand up among their th top three shooters, and then fourth through tenth best shooters get to go along a prize table, and that's not uh, anything simple. There's some very expensive guns on that table along with some other things. Uh, and then after that, there's dozens of trophies and medals and ribbons and things that they give out. But you know what the number one reward, and Izzy was sharing this with me, and I have to agree, it was what I thought was the number one reward when I was shooting with powder guns, and that is that everybody wins if you're going there for this purpose, and that is to see some old friends again people who have that same passion, that same passion for competition that you have, and sharing with them. And in some cases, their gun doesn't work, and you've got to share your gun with them. Interesting. I found the same to be true with powder guns. Good friends is the real reward. It's that way with hunting, by the way. So here's Izzy's list. And, uh, the first thing on it is you've got to check the weather. What's it going to be like tomorrow? You know, that can make a big difference on how well this gun shoots versus another gun. What ammo works the best? And uh, what clothes you ought to wear? And uh, checking the weather up front is important. Number two, you want to practice right up to the day of competition. And you want to be making a list because the list uh, that you make often for practice is the same list for shooting. Izzy told me the time that he got to a shoot and they use a sandbag, but they also use a bipod. And he forgot the bipod. He remembered it for practice. He did not remember it for the shoot. You want to have a, a primary gun and then an alter, alternate. This gun just might not work after the travel to that location. So he has alternate guns. Um, and one part of this gun, you want to make sure that it's functioning correctly. Uh, but one part that has to be first on the functionability is the safety. Why? And the answer is that when the judges come down the tables, they check the safety. They want to make sure the gun's on safe, is off safe, whatever it's supposed to be at that time. Anticipate safety. And whether you're in competition or just out hunting, shooting with the guys, or even, and this could be even more dangerous, out by yourself, you want to make sure you know if that safety's on or off. Izzy said something strange. He said sometimes uh, 
he's had guns that work better when the barrel was clean and other times when the barrel wasn't clean I thought that was interesting he knows which guns those are and he acts accordingly another thing he's big on was the air source much like this uh, tank right here this fiber optic tank and this tether is referred to as a tether uh, he said it's very important for him to take Florida air to a Utah or a competition up on the East Coast because that's the air that this gun is sighted in for and it has the right moisture or lack of moisture so he takes his own air something I didn't have to worry about with powder guns uh, he said uh, pellets here's one interesting he said he's tried FX pellets since FX guns are often the lead guns he said H&N uh, aren't the best and Vortex I have personally found Vortex here's a good company Hatson but these pellets have more shavings in them than I've ever seen any other pellet so uh, what's the one that he recommends for comp competitive shooting uh, the uh, Diabolo and you say Rush you said it wrong actually I've been saying it wrong that is not saying Diablo which is what most people say it's Diabolo that's the correct pronunciation of the JSB match uh, exact pellets so uh, this is the standby now why does that pellet better than others he said that uh, and I found this to be true myself the JSBs are made of a soft lead and that skirt blows up with the air behind it captures it all gains the greatest uh, velocity and shoots the straightest coming out and it's a round nose not a flathead not a wad cutter but just the good old round nose uh, he said FX pellets this is his opinion but I will agree the lead is harder and it's made in the same Czechoslovakian uh, factory that JSB factory in Czechoslovakia was the factory that made the AK-47s and they make a lot of private uh, uh, ammo now H&N is German and it's all made in Germany I think H&N is actually the biggest in uh, in Europe so uh, he does that let me get back to this list that Izzy shared with me he said be sure you take an extra tin because if you drop a tin some of those pellets particularly the JSB got not quite so round on that back skirt that impact so you had to have that second and then when he got home he had to put them through a resizer to get them back to the shape they were supposed to be um, hydration now he's talking about himself Izzy said that Izzy said that uh, you got to be really careful particularly out there in the wild wild west Utah you can get dehydrated and he said he said something strange to me I, I didn't run across this in powder gun hunting but I think it's true he wants the right amount of water hydration but he said he also had to be really careful on the amount of coffee he said that caffeine and coffee was just perfect enough uh, for him to shoot now if you remember in my accuracy video and I said you want to do the right breathing as you go up and down and in competition you not only let out a third of the air as those crosshairs settle in on the target but if you watch carefully your eye often will blink uh, not close but it just does this little motion when your heart beats and that's not when you want to be looking through a scope or iron sights or squeezing a trigger and so you actually not only watch your breathing but you're watching that click click and it's between heartbeats that you want to pull the trigger and you want a 
a real sensitive trigger because the, the more unsensitive it is is the more you'll shake and pull that trigger back but I knew whether it's a powder gun or an air gun boom I thought about it it shoots on Izzy's list he takes a cleaning rod a, uh, why would you take a cleaning rod? Well, sometimes these competitive shoots can last several days and you want that air gun clean between shots. Um, he keeps two Ziploc bags with the little uh, white patches. One is uh, dry patches that he finishes his cleaning with and the other Ziploc bag are moist uh, pads. And what are they moist with? Well, that's with, if you will, uh, something uh, that helps clean that barrel. He uses a bunch of stuff. His second choice is Balistrol. Uh, Balistrol is pretty good. Uh, he likes the non uh, aromatic can because he, he believes you get more ounces for the dollar than when you get the spray. That's fine. Particularly if you're just shaking it onto those white patches. But his first, uh, his first uh, solvent was something I hadn't heard before. He says he gets it from Amazon. And uh, he said that is something called um, Breakthrough. Breakthrough. And I checked it on Amazon and Breakthrough has a, a dozen products. They appear to be mostly Teflon based, which is fine with me. And that's what he's using. And he does lubricate those pellets with it. And he cleans that barrel with it. Well, let me wrap this list up inside. I call March uh, a teaser month. And trust me, outside, it's teasing. We've had snow, we've had rain, we've had sunshine. But we also have cold. And it's about 30 degrees out there. Uh, Izzy uh, shared also with me that on cold mornings, he, uh, and even if you're out in the south and, and, and even in the places like Utah, you can get cold hands. So he needed some hand warmers. And uh, he even liked a hot seat that he could put his uh, fanny on. Uh, those things helped him. Uh, that big uh, RMAC Rocky Mountain uh, air gun classic, about a thousand people out there and a lot of them, a couple hundred of them are international uh, winners. So that competition's tough. Trying to be number one among a thousand is tough. I thought it was uh, interesting. Izzy, he used to have a normal haircut like me. But the last time I saw Izzy, he had a, a mohawk and the mohawk was yellow. and. Uh, and, and maybe that was good because I've actually watched some v YouTube videos of those contests and I see a guy out there with a yellow mohawk. So uh, sometimes you, you get you in your hair cut uh, so that you could be seen. Um, that uh, New England classic, uh, that has about 800, doesn't quite get the same international exposure, but it's an important one. 21,000 is divided among the top three people. Let me share some of the things that I did in powder gun shooting some of my own secrets. Uh, one of the things, and maybe Izzy does these and just forgot to share them, but one of them is that you usually uh, really get a good physical, a health physical from your doctor. Uh, you want to be in good shape. Some of these places are out in the boonies where they don't have great doctors if you got in trouble and definitely don't have great dentists. So even a trip to the dentist once a year and for, if you're like me, you wear eyeglasses. Uh, it's it's got to be done every couple years anyway. Why not just uh, get a test before competition so that your eyes your body, everything is, is at its peak, if you will. Um, I did uh, uh, some accuracy videos. Be sure you watch them. They'll tell you how to hold that finger when you pull back, how to breathe. Those are important things. Uh, in powder guns, we were taught <laughs> to do a, what's called a double tap. So two bullets here, two in the chest. 
if you're twisting uh, the bad guy around two in the shoulder it's bam 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 that's not the case in air guns boom and they shoot at short range then on out of 100 yards and then three and four hundred yards uh, you want that air gun balanced and then you want the scope balanced and you can see that that's something I still do to this day it's very important that this gun is balanced as are the crosshairs up there and everything's balanced so that when I do make adjustments they are exactly what I think they are know the wind you never really know and that's one of the things you check that weather report about it. what is the wind left or right five mile an hour 10 15 and hopefully on that first shot you've got the wind correct because if you don't and let's just say you shoot one inch to the left because the winds blowing right when that happens um, and I make the compensation for it what if that's not the right compensation at that location with that moisture in the air etc etc and so you see uh oh the bullet hit one inch to the right one inch to the left and so on your second third fourth shot you've compensated you say okay only one bad shot yeah that one bad shot kept you from taking first place so know your wind I hope that you've enjoyed the video today hope you learned something now please don't take some of these things so seriously because the majority of you will never be in the competition that Izzy gets into but it gives you a little window of what it's like and it might help you some of these things just might help you uh, in your own accuracy competing against yourself against some good friends maybe hunting all of those things count anyway if you like it give us a thumbs up if you have questions and maybe you do I'll be glad to answer whatever I can leave them in the comments section that's what I that's how I spend my mornings um, and if you want uh, if you want one of our hats or shirts I think you'll uh, see them on the video and how you get those I think we've got enough of that uh, military green to get through oh at least through the summer maybe the end of the year not then we'll pick a different color but uh, if you don't have uh, army green military green you might want to to uh, uh, order our stuff okay uh, and uh, just remember we like you to be sharp we want you to be safe and we want you to be silent